boys, how you guys doing? Boys and girls, we don't discriminate here. So the time has finally come for us to actually start uh, rebuilding the SRT4, like an OEM refresh, the block and the head and all that stuff. Plus some maybe little, little add-ons here and there, but the time has finally come. Here we are, let me show you what I got going on. Block came back from the machine shop. Everything is cleaned up, ready to get installed. I did torque these down, these came off, but I had to torque these down to 104 inch pounds, just an FYI. So here is the actual the block itself, getting ready for bearings and camshaft, crankshaft, I'm sorry. Here is the bed plate, get ready to put on, get it all cleaned up, um, get ready to put the new bearings and stuff in there too. And uh, we're going to be using... Uh, Basic uh, OEM, Clavite, Male, Refresh, stuff like that. Um, but basically, this is my setup. I'm not in the shop right now because it's just a lot easier to do it in the climate controlled area for torque specs. So, small stuff here and there. Nothing too crazy, but it's a pretty good situation. I'm, uh, I'm working with what I got pretty much. So, <clears throat> so I'm going to get ready to give you guys the best insight I can give you on how to do like an OEM refresh on it. No, no low compression, high compression pistons. This is basically OEM stuff. Um, I think it's gonna turn out great. Um, I have rebuilt engines before, so this is not something new to me. Um, I have my own ways of doing it. I'm sure everybody has their own ways of doing it. Um, you know, I'm just trying to kind of give you the heads up on what I would do. This is not saying that my way is the correct way. This is just how I'm gonna do it. Um, there's so many other ways of doing it. So, you know, if you guys have any comments or suggestions, you know, put them in the uh, put them in the bottom of the comments and we can work things out and I'll take your advice or you take my advice. It doesn't matter, whatever you guys want to do. Big props to Zach Ellis, by the way. That's my boy Zach Ellis from PA. Give us a big shout out on his YouTube channel. So big shout out to, to Zach Ellis. Go follow him on YouTube. I'm ready. I'm excited. And uh, let's get started. All right, guys. So we are putting on the bearings as you can see here they have a little tang right there a little groove and that goes with the same groove that little tang right there as far as the bearing goes so you have to make sure that goes in there that way it's stationary it won't move and it's supposed to be in the same groove The holes also have oil holes. Make sure you match the oil holes. Do not block up the oil holes. We're gonna have a hell of a time. And then you're gonna have a dead engine, so don't do that. And these are the Male. This is the part number that they gave me. And apparently I did some little research on that. That's why I kind of got a little effed up here, is that the later models uh, had a solid thrust bearing on the other side. The newer models have two oil galleys or two oil holes on both sides. So apparently this just superseded from the old style to the new style. So I'll just be getting more oil. I called Modern and asked him about the same question. They just say, hey, it's completely fine. You're just going to be getting more oil. And I also told him I don't have a tang compared to the other ones. And he was just explaining to me that a lot of dealerships are having the same thing where they are just trying to use this thrust bearing for multiple applications. That's why they don't uh, directly put the tang on there. So, And I called the dealership and they kind of told me the same thing about the thrust bearing and the part number that supersedes from the new one to the new one. That's why he says that you won't. They, when they sell you a thrust bearing kit, they won't sell you a thrust bearing with oil holes on one side and not on the other side. But like this one is just a more superseded version of it. Um, that's why I was like, what the hell's going on? But we are okay. I was a little concerned myself. I'm like, this just doesn't seem right that it's it's having that problem. So, but I put it on there, pushed it in. All right, now that we did the dry fit on the block side, now we're gonna do the dry fit on the bed plate side. Just remind you, I already cleaned everything really, really good. I cleaned everything on the block, cleaned everything on the bed plate. 
Now it's just a matter of just squeezing these boys in, you know. I do like the fact that there are tangs on there, just because that keeps it from uh, causing all kind of mischief. But it play is has a dry fit and the block is dry fitted. So here's the assembly wood I'm using and I'm ready to clean stuff off a little bit one more time. And then I'm gonna get ready to take the crankshaft out of that crate right there so it's nice and clean and then drop it in the block. <clears throat> all right guys i'm about ready to put the bed plate on but i had to put my sealant on here to seal the bed plate to the block now it is recommended to use anaerobic sealant do not use rtv you can use the uh mopar stuff but everybody that i know has used the anaerobic gasket maker it is the uh 51813 the nice thing about anaerobic sealing that it does not seal until it is torqued down. In the uh, book, which I printed out, how to, where to put the anaerobic sealant in this area right here. And if there's any excess that I can wipe off from the inside, I will do that as soon as, I know, as soon as I'm done torquing it, which I know there will be excess. Also, when installing the new bed plate, um, it is always recommended to install new bolts for the bed plate. Not, don't, don't reuse any bolts. But I'm actually going to be uh, using the uh, Daryl Cox Racing uh, strap kit. Okay, install the ARP. According to DCR, you want to put these by the transmission side, the shorter ones. <clears throat> and I, I installed ARP uh, fastener and lube into these as well. With an Allen. Basically, all it does is just uh, essentially just hold down right here because these are prone to cracking. Uh, you don't have to use these, but since I'm going to be tracking the car and getting some high RPMs on it, that's what I want to make sure that that groove right there. They make them where they're just flat, but you have to take the bed plate to get to the machine shop to machine it. But these are just direct fit. Um, but I'll show you how to do that. But yeah, they're essentially just that groove right there to hold down that side. Spacers in here. All right, everything is in place, finger tight. I had to loosen them up a little bit because we want to make sure that we don't over tighten the studs so that the actual nut passes through. So now we put uh, some ARP fasteners on our nuts. That's going to go on. Obviously, I'll wipe off the excess. Before we take torque anything down, I'm going to install the outer parameter studs with the nut for the other holes on the um, bed plate as well. Get those ready so I can torque them down whenever I get the second, after I'm done doing the center portion.
Uh, we're about to start torquing now. Um, I got all the center pieces of the center bolts and nuts ready uh, for the DCR to 16 millimeter uh, socket to tighten down here. And then I believe the outer parameters are a 13 millimeter socket. Also, since we're doing the balance shaft leak kit, you have to uh, right over here. Let me move this around so I can show you. Keep the balance shaft, but realistically more power, you can just take them off. This hole you have to tap and uh, plug this hole right here. Uh, that way there's no extra oil coming through there. And then you don't have an issue with the bearings drying out. I already did that. Um, you can get that through the DCR kit. I think 518 makes something like that that they can send you over to tap it. And <clears throat> tighten 1 through 10, which is the middle section. Tighten them down to uh, 30 foot-pounds in a sequence. And I'll show you the sequence here in a minute. Okay. Two. Okay. Also, before we started torquing down, they recommend you wedging something here, which I already did. On the crankshaft, I have to pull it as much forward just so that the clearances for the uh, thrust bearings are as accurate as possible. And then you have number three. Okay, and then number four. Okay, five. All right, guys, so now that we have this torqued on, we took the wedge off and we're going to retorque everything again to uh, 30 foot pounds again. I'm sorry if I didn't mention that. Okay, center section is completely torqued down. Okay, now we're doing the outer parameter ones in the sequence that they give us with a uh, 13 millimeter at 250 inch pounds, not foot pounds, inch pounds. Okay. Okay. And there's your 20. <clears throat> Alright guys, since we torqued down, force torqued down, wedge, second torque down, then we did the outer parameters, now we're doing the center parameters again at, what is it, 55 foot-pounds, 1 through 10. One other thing it tells you to do is the turning radius of the crankshaft, it has to be no more than 50 inch pounds which is not a lot it's less than i don't know four foot pounds but as you can see it sprints freely another thing we got to do with the dcr kit now that everything's torqued down <clears throat> got to torque these down to 50 not 55 i kept saying 55 you got to install these caps that go to the bottom up here to the actual straps you got to install the brass side in first and then install them by hand and then once they're all the way in seated you got to install them to eight foot pounds We're looking pretty good. Last thing I got to do is put the balance shaft delete studs that you can buy from DCR, which I have. But besides that, it's looking pretty good for the lower half. Uh, next time that we do this, well, next time we do a, another vlog will be the putting on the pistons and the rod bearings and all that fun stuff. So it's finally, finally coming together. And uh, I like to take you guys along for the entire process with the water pump and everything else and installing the rear main seal which taking off uh the oil pump and uh you need a special tool which i had to buy and then you need a special tool to put on the um rear main people can use a block of wood but you know god bless them that's just not the way i'm going to do things so but yeah hope you guys enjoy this vlog and uh don't forget to like subscribe and comment and i appreciate all the love you guys show me 
and I'll see you guys in the next one.